Welcome everyone. My name is Robert Reichart and I am the program coordinator of the brand new animation program here at Fanshawe College and this is our open house. So again, welcome. It's nice that you can join us today and we hope that you are safe and secure and watching this from at home. And of course, this is our virtual open house this year instead of our face-to-face open house we normally have during the springtime. But over the next hour or so, I'm going to talk to you about our brand new animation program that we've been working so hard on developing over the last little while. And my goal over this time during this talk is to hopefully answer all of your questions. And I'm going to talk about the program details, the courses, you know, some of the things that you're going to be studying. I'll be talking about hardware and software, things that you're going to need having you know, to come in with to the program. Uh, I'll talk about your instructors, the people who are going to be teaching you. And hopefully at the end of this, you'll be able to walk away having a really good idea of what the program is about and having all of your questions answered. Now, that might not be realistic completely. You might still have some questions. And if you do, at the end of this talk, I'm going to be posting my email address. And I encourage you all to send me an email if you have any questions at all. And I promise that I will respond very quickly. So other than that, let's get to it. So before we go ahead and talk about course-related specifics, I'd like to talk to you about a few things. One of them is preparedness. What can you do over the summer to get you ready for the fall term? Another thing is what makes for a good candidate coming into this program? What would make for a good student? So first, let's talk about preparedness, things that you can do to get yourself ready. If you look on screen right now, we've got the Fanshawe Animation 2020 Facebook page. And very shortly, I'll be sending out an email to all my registered and confirmed students um, to invite them to join our new Facebook page for the program. So this is a Facebook page. It is curated by the professors. It is a very safe and welcoming place to be, and we encourage all of our students to join and participate. So it's a multifaceted page, and many of our students, of course, are on social media all the time anyway, um, and so Facebook is nothing new. So we use it as a form of communication. Um, we get students to join as soon as they can, and throughout the summer, we start having them participate in things and talking and communicating and sharing ideas and things with each other, starting to create a hub and a place to hang out for our program. The professors quite often uh, will share links to stories, to film reviews, animation reviews, and of course some things that we like to do to get the students ready for September is have them even do a little bit of work if they can throughout the summer. So we'll post tutorials on, you know, the basics of drawing, maybe some simple animation tutorials and things like that. And as the students start to participate in these very simple things, they start getting ready for the program coming up in the fall. So when they land in September in our program, when we start talking about terminology and software and hardware that really none of this is completely brand new to them that they've already been thinking and dabbling in things so as we post tutorials we'll also be posting um, items that we need our students to purchase it might be a digital tablet which i'll talk about a little bit later on um, we'll be talking about hardware you know computers that students should have whether it's a desktop or laptop we'll talk about that later as well uh, making sure that technically you've got the things that you need. And of course, software um, will provide links for the free software that we use in the program and provide links for some of the software that students may need to purchase. So all of these things just sort of create a nice base for students to sort of step off of when they arrive here in September. And of course, It'd be nice that they got to meet each other and sort of participate in our hub, which is animation. 
Um, so the next thing that we'll talk about is what makes for a good student. And I talked to a lot of parents and their sons and daughters and other applicants who have come from other places, uh, not necessarily high school. And we talk about things that would help students uh, be a success prior to coming into our program. Uh, one thing is art history courses. So art history is a great way to provide a sort of language basis in design and art uh, that students have access to. So they will be able to understand movements of art history and certain periods of design and art throughout uh, history, and it provides a great basis for them to incorporate these ideas into their own work. Other things that students can do, which are very important, are take life drawing courses. So in high school, many high schools provide life drawing, which is a very critical resource for all artists and uh, for animators as well. So if you have that opportunity, take as many life drawing courses as you can. And of course, there are many, many free resources on the internet for you to be drawing life drawing and general drawing courses. Um, so there's many things that are free. And of course, here in London as well, um, if you're not in school anymore, you can take life drawing courses at the Arts Project, which is a big gallery downtown in London, and they do two nights a week of drop-in um, courses. So you can just show up, and they've already got a life drawing model there, and many of my students participate throughout the year in these life drawing courses. Communication tech courses, which are very common in high school, uh, which include digital imaging, things like Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, coding courses are great. Many students grab cameras and, and go out and shoot and edit and edit audio and create videos. Um, graphic design and doing page layout, all of these things immerse students in the world that we work in, which is application um, design. So whether we're using 3D applications or digital graphics applications like Photoshop, the more the better. That way when we throw a new application at you, um, you aren't, you know, frozen by fear by having to learn something new because you're already used to it. So as much as you can do as far as digital applications, the better. The last thing I, I think is a little bit of a no-brainer, but I have to talk about it because sometimes people don't consider this, and it's actually doing your research into the industry. So if you're planning to be an animator, have you actually researched animation and the people that do it? Um, have you listened to uh, interviews of animators working on films? Have you looked at the software that they use? Everything as far as doing research, provides you with a basis of success. So the more that you understand what this field is about, the better it is for you. And it allows you to make a very wise choice about picking a career path and a queer program. So all of these things, as far as sort of coming into the program, having behind you, um, are all keys to success moving forward. So previously, we talked about uh, good things for students to have uh, as far as a background coming into the program. Now let's take a look at the courses in the program, the things that you're going to be studying. So on screen, I've got the Fanshawe College Animation website, and I'm just going to be scrolling through it. And I encourage you to open this at home uh, so you can do the same at your leisure and take a look at more details should you need to. First of all, what I encourage you to do is just go through and scroll between the different terms. Get a look at the names of the courses that you're going to be studying. And there is the corresponding course codes to the left as well. So anything that is an MMED is a core animation course. But you'll notice that there are a few other courses which are not an MMED. There's a COM course. There is a RIT course. And these are supplementary courses to the program um, that are actually taught by faculties outside of ours. 
And they are, for example, your comm could be like a gen ed course where you study uh, the history of gaming or some other very interesting courses. And your writ is a writing course. So some of these things are not directly related to animation, but they are a college requirement and they are necessary for you to pass in order to get your diploma. One thing that is very important to recognize is that students coming into this program are coming in with varied backgrounds. A lot of them are coming in from high school and perhaps they've taken art history and drawing and things and communication tech, which is great. Uh, some people might be concerned because perhaps they've taken time off and have worked for a while and now decided to go back in and take a college course study animation. The thing about the program is that we are starting everyone at ground zero, as if you do not know anything in the industry. So when you take a look at the courses, uh, remember that we are starting everyone off at the same point. So in our animation program, all of our courses are designed to support each other. And what I encourage you to do is while you're looking through this page is go to the left hand side, click on one of the MMED course code links and expand it to get a quick uh, summary of what that course is. So for example, our 3D animation course is where you will be working on a computer uh, in the software, which is going to be Maya, Autodesk Maya and you're going to learn the 12 principles of animation. In our digital 2D animation course, as it describes, this is a 2D course. It's still on the computer. Um, you will be learning drawing principles, but also you are going to be able to understand the workflow of a 2D animation, which supports the 3D animation course. Other courses that we have got are 3D software, for example, and this is going to be a course that, as you read through, um, you will be sort of understanding and using different types of software. Maya, of course. Our game engine that we are going to be using is Unreal Engine. Other software programs that we're going to be using in this course is Substance Painter, Marmoset, Toolbag, ZBrush. Those are all core software packages. So as you go through this course, this is where you're going to be learning 3D sculpting and texturing and modeling and other things as well. As we move up and we take a look at some of these other courses, um, pre-production, um, this is your course studying cinematography and everything to do with film editing techniques. So as you are learning how to animate and you're drawing and creating storyboards and you're building animations, you're going to be learning cinematography and the language of editing and different shots in films. And you're going to learn how to incorporate those into the animations that you create. Lastly, in first term, I'm going to talk about our motion capture course. And we're very proud to say that at Fanshawe, we've got a state-of-the-art motion capture facility. It's called an OptiTrack system and it has 24 cameras. And in our campus downtown, that is where our motion capture facility is. So students are used to using this on a regular basis. Um, as opposed to animating a character in the software in their 3D course, this is where students can storyboard and come up with a concept of putting live actors into a bodysuit. That bodysuit has optical markers on the outside and the cameras actually project light. They hit the markers and bounce the data back to the cameras, which calculates where the actors are in three dimensional space. Now this is a very big technique that the industry uses for many of the animated films that you watch these days. And if I were to show you an example, this is some of our students working in the motion capture facility. You'll notice that the students have body suits on, they've got caps on, there's these optical markers on their bodies. Um, this is just a little detail of the room. It's quite a large room and there are 24 cameras around the edge of the ceiling shooting down at these um, optical marker. So they're projecting light. They hit the marker. It bounces off the marker and goes back to the camera and calculates where our actors are in three dimensional space. 
Um, here we've got our students are just warming up, having some fun. They're going to practice maybe doing a fight sequence um, in this space. And this facility will hold up to five actors at one time um, being recorded. So in the background, you'll see that there are some characters that our students have created in 3D. And what they're doing is live acting in their body suits. And as they do that, you see the motion of our students is driving the characters in the software. And what we do is record that uh, as an animation that we can bring into Maya to further add to other animations to create a full-blown fight sequence or whatever it is that you want to do. Now, this is technology that, as I mentioned, you see everywhere. Uh, if you think back to uh, the Lord of the Rings and the character of Golem, uh, Andy Serkis, who's the actor who actually acted out the scenes in just a facility that just had cameras, nothing else in it. And then they modeled Golem in a 3D application, very similar to what you're seeing up front. And they took the motion from him and applied it to that character and the character of Golem was born. So we're very proud of this facility and students have a blast in here creating animation. So this is one of the foundations really that sets us apart, I think, from other programs uh, that teach animation. So as we continue, um, I'm just really giving you a high level of what our program is. Remember that these courses that you are learning build from term to term. So you're building foundational skills in term one. You're continuing with many of those uh, techniques uh, and different types of content in term two. Terms three and four is where you're starting to get more advanced and you're starting to now consider building work for your portfolio. So if I were to characterize level four um, in a couple of different ways, um, one way is that you will be working with your colleagues, your classmates in creating a team based animated film and we are mimicking the production environment um, as far as the processes so your professors really are becoming your clients and you are developing a film from scratch um, highlighting uh, you know great story great character development both creatures and characters as well in this program um, and the second part is building um, individual portfolio pieces um, that you can showcase when it comes time for you to go out and look for a job. Some of the things that really make us stand apart is that we are very, very technology driven. The things that we are using are currently state of the art to how the industry is um, developing animated films. Um, a big part of this, of course, is motion capture and virtual production as well. So again, if you need further detail, uh, on specifics on content, please email me at the end and I will be happy to follow up with more detail on those. I'd like to talk to you about the things that you're going to need to buy for the animation program. One of them is a digital drawing tablet and pen. And the company that we recommend you purchase these from is Wacom. And Wacom is by far the industry leader of digital drawing devices. Most professionals in our industry, animation, special effects, video game, use Wacom products. And the model is the Intuos Pro tablet and pen. Now, when you are doing a price comparison and you're shopping around online or in stores, you may find other companies producing what looks like similar products. And because they're cheaper, you might think, well, that's a good deal, but it's not. Um, Wacom makes the best products. Um, they are compatible with what we are doing in our program, and we can count on those. So when you go to the Wacom site right here, um, you'll see that for the Intuos Pro lineup, there are three different sizes, a small, medium, and large. And the price is differentiate quite a bit. The small is typically around $250 with a pen, the large upwards of $650. And we're always telling students that, you know what, there's, it's nice to have the bigger ones, but it's not necessary. 
um, and the small one does just fine. So what you're going to need to have is an Intuos Pro small, unless you've got, you know, a disposable income and we want to buy a bigger one, that's fine. But the small does just great. Um, you are also going to need to have a pen, but a specific pen, and I'll show you why. When you are in one of our labs doing your work and following along in class, you'll notice in this picture here, which is a shot of one of our labs, that you've got the monitor on the right, but the slanted monitor in front of the student is a Wacom product, and it's a top-of-the-line product called a Cintiq. So that pen that I'm talking about needs to be compatible with this Cintiq and your digital drawing tablet, because when you're sitting in a lab and you're doing your work, what kind of work are you going to be doing? Well, you're going to open up Photoshop and you're going to grab your pen and you're actually going to grab a paintbrush right in Photoshop and paint digitally right on the screen. Or you might be doing digital sculpting right on the screen. It's a wonderful way to work. And Fanshawe has really invested heavily in these. In fact, we've got five labs of 40 workstations of Cintiqs. That's 200 Cintiqs for our students to use. And, and that really is remarkable because they are very, very expensive. Now, to get back to the pen, the pen that you purchase with your digital drawing tablet needs to be compatible in class with our Cintiqs. Not all of the Wacom pens are compatible and we don't want you to spend money buying the wrong product. So how do you know? The best thing to do is to ask me, send me an email when you're ready to purchase it. Or, of course, if you're part of the Facebook group, um, we're going to be posting a link to the actual Intuos Pro tablet and pen that you need to buy. Um, sometimes we will see sales at Best Buy or on Amazon and we'll post those as well and students rush out and buy them and that's great. So make sure that before you make any purchase, send us a link to what it is that you want to buy to ensure that you're getting the right product. So the next thing that we want to talk about, and it is very, very important, is the state of your computer at home. You're going to need to have a system, a reliable system, whether it is a desktop or a laptop. Um, and the question that we would have for you is, is it current? And what I mean by current is a couple of years old. Anything beyond that uh, perhaps might not be powerful enough to run the software that you're going to be using. Because remember, once you're in this program, you're using industry standard software, which is taxing on your computer. You're, need, you're going to need to have a laptop or a desktop um, that has a very fast processor. It's got a lot of RAM in it, a minimum of 16 gigabytes, 32 is better, um, and a very good graphics card. So those are the three things, the three components that really factor into having a system that is good for running the software that we need to. Um, additional things is hard drive space and perhaps having a solid state hard drive, which launches applications very quickly. That is a nice to have. And a lot of new computers already have those built in. But if you are running a computer which is a few years old, you need to ask yourself, what do I have inside of it? And get an opinion. Now, um, sometimes students feel like they need to rush out and buy the latest and greatest Alienware, and that is not the case. What we like to do is recommend students install the software that we use and test it out and see how your system responds to it, because quite likely you might be able to get through the first year or maybe the entire program with the computer that you've got. And if at least you test it out, you might be able to get some use out of it. And at some point throughout the year, you can plan towards buying another one. So again, make sure that you talk to your professors about um, their opinion and see if you can, you know, uh, use your computer for as long as you can. So laptops and desktops are very sort of specific thing. They're subjective to how people like to use them, meaning that you know, desktops are nice because they are upgradable. Um, not a lot of laptops are. 
Um, but laptops are portable, and those are good for students um, who are traveling back and forth from the campus to home. And sometimes if they're from out of town going home on Thanksgiving, etc., they can take their laptop and continue to do their homework while they're at home um, studying and doing things. So another thing that you're going to need to get um, installed as soon as you can is the software. Now, Autodesk and Unity are both free pieces of software. You do not need to pay for these. Um, we will give you the links to go to Autodesk and to Unity, and you'll be able to select them and download them onto your system, which is great. Some of the other software applications that I've talked about, uh, Marmoset, ZBrush, Substance Painter, some of which you will have to purchase, and we'll talk to you a little bit later about those, perhaps in the summer, on our Facebook page as well. But for right now, the two key pieces of software that you need to have installed, the sooner the better, because what you don't want to do is show up for your first week of class uh, only to find out that you've got technical issues downloading software. And you know, it, it does happen because everyone runs a different operating system or a different laptop or desktop, and sometimes there are idiosyncrasies with the computer that you've got. So the sooner you get it installed, the better, so you can test it out and get it running. Some additional things that you would need to have are perhaps a portable hard drive and a USB thumb drive. And those are for transferring projects and assignments that you're doing in class um, onto your drive and taking them home so you continue to do your homework. Um, it is important that you're always making backups of your work. And in fact, we always say make three backups in different places. So one is your computer, one is a major hard drive, and maybe one is on the cloud or on a USB thumb drive. Because believe me, students have lost their entire computer drives and lost all their work on it. And that is a really tough place to be in. So as you look through this list, we've got digital tablets, we've got whether your computer is current enough and up to date to be useful in this program, the software that you need to download, and a few other things like hard drives that you can purchase these days for really not a lot of money. And these things will get you rolling in the program. So as we wind down our animation open house, I thought it would be nice to showcase our downtown campus and what you're looking at is our School of Digital and Performing Arts in London, Ontario on Dundas Street. This is going to be one of the buildings that you study in as an animation student and in addition to this we've got a brand new campus across the street which is called our Kings Mill Campus. So between the two this is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time in class. And as I talk in open house to parents and prospective students uh, and these people who are shopping around trying to compare programs and finding a good fit for themselves, um, I often talk about uh, the investment that a college is prepared to put into its programs in a few different factors. One is the monetary investment. So when you're shopping around, uh, one thing that you should be looking at is the investment into the technology in the form of computers and peripherals and labs and things like that. And I mentioned throughout my talk that we've got, you know, 200 high-end Cintiq workstations across five labs. We have got a high-end motion capture facility in the building that you're looking at right here and the college has demonstrated the intent of you know investing a lot of money into these programs for your sake um, you know all of these tools that you're learning are part of the process that will lead you to become a professional when you graduate and this is incredibly important so using the right hardware and software and also learning from the right people. So one thing I mentioned at the beginning is your instructors. And what I can say is the people that are going to be teaching you in this animation program are people who've got easily 20 years each of industry experience behind them. They've worked on major Hollywood motion picture films and games. 
um, and they have walked the walk, and these are the people that you need to be learning from. So make sure that you join our Facebook group, become part of the animation community. There you're going to meet your colleagues and your peers and the professors, and you'll be able to spend some time this summer really getting up to speed and generally be in a good place to start the program this coming fall. Um, for all the people who have uh, applied and confirmed, I look forward to talking with you soon. And to the people who are just getting information about the program, perhaps for a later time, I hope I had the opportunity to answer some of your questions. And right now what I will do is post my email. And again, should you have further questions, please just drop me a line and I will get back to you very quickly. So other than that, everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and I look forward to talking to you soon.